Okay, hi guys. Um, welcome to the FX Street webinar. Okay, my name is Ian Coleman. I'm one of the uh, traders and analysts at, uh, at First of Trading. Okay, we're uh, an analytical uh, and uh, analytical report writing and trade recommendation company. I suppose is how you could uh, you could describe First of Trading. Okay, we uh, we publish reports on most FX pairs or up to 15 FX pairs, um, both medium term and intraday, uh, with trade recommendations, uh, stock index, in indices, futures, uh, and fixed income. Um, my role within the company is um, is the head of the FX department, so um, I oversee all the all the um, the FX trades and, and recommendations that we make. Okay, today, first of all, I'd like to wish you all a, a happy new so year. Run through 12 o'clock in London and some in New York. Just quick okay. run through from the US listeners just coming to their desks. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, wish you all a happy new year uh, for 2013. I hope it's very uh, prosperous for you. Um, what we're going to do today, um, we host all, all sorts of different webinars for, uh, for, for, for FX Street. Um, and I did, uh, I don't know if it was Vicky or one of the other um, guys around at, uh, at FX Street, but I said a while ago, sort of struggling with with things to teach, been talking um, and hosting sort of weekly webinars for, I think, about three, four years now. Um, and in that time, we've obviously covered loads of different uh, subjects, from sort of Ishimoko Cloud to trade management to, to price action to thin levels to symmetrical patterns to Elliott Wave etc. Um, I wouldn't say that we're struggling for input because we can obviously repeat some but it obviously gets pretty boring for people. Um, so I'm going to, I thought this week we'll just, with it being the start of a new year, I thought we'd throw um, some questions in and basically try and answer, them, answer those questions within an hour. Um, and we're also going to, that's going to lead us on to basically money management, um, trade size, whether or not, you know, we can predict the market with regards to retracements, extensions, trend. Um, so I'm going to get started because I'm probably losing track already and you're probably wondering what the hell I'm going on about. So um, I've written some questions down here. One of them is the... Uh, it's from Trading in the Zone. If you haven't read that book, uh, I suggest you do because it's uh, it's very good. And I actually have the five points uh, from Trading in the Zone uh, in my office, um, and it's basically at eye level. And I look at them every day, um, and I do believe in the uh, in these five points. And one of the five points is basically says, "Can we predict the markets?" Okay. Um, and that's a that's a really relevant quick question. Can can we predict the markets? Okay, and do we know? And obviously, no, being in inverted commas, commas. Okay, do we know when the trends change? Okay, and do we know what is going to happen next? And then basically, at the end of it, he basically says, you know, do we do we need to know? Um, if you have uh, a system in place that basically puts you into the trades and takes you out of trades, um, then is it essential that you actually need to know where the market is going? So we're going to look at all that. We could, that's going to bring us on to, on to basically a bias. Okay? So that, for me, trading the markets is, is basically about having a bias. Okay? Is the bias bullish? Is the bias, bias bearish? Um, or is it neutral? Okay, what are the signals? And what I also look to uh, a hell of a lot is time frames, okay? Um, I'm breaking down time frames. I've just got a euro dollar, a plain euro dollar chart up here with two moving averages. Um, I think the first moving average is a, is a 20 moving average and the sec second moving average is a 50, okay? And they're basically just the trend indication. Um, and all I want to do is just break through the time frames right at the start of this webinar and just show how we can have conflicting views in all these different time frames. 
So how can you, you know, obviously some guys are trading off short, shorter time frames, so they might be bearish. So another guy might be trading off a four hour time frame, so he'll have a bullish bias. Okay. Now we always say, are you, are you correct? You know, I bought Euro dollar, is it going up? Am I correct? But both participants, if you like, in the market can be correct. You know, the guy that's trading off a one minute chart and shorting it might be looking for 10 pips, so he could be correct in that time frame. Whereas the guy that's trading off a daily, a four hourly, what, you know, a larger time frame and is looking to buy it, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with him buying, buying on dips because he's probably looking for 100 pips with a much larger stop loss. Okay, so it's, it's these different views that we're going to get off different time frames. Okay, and then we're going to talk about these views and I'm basically going to try and show you um, a very basic technique for getting into trades and staying in trades, okay, without actually having to have a view of the market. Now that might sound ridiculous because obviously I'm a technical analyst and, and I make money um, not only from trading the markets but from an analysing the markets and selling our uh, analytical reports into banks and hedge funds and from retail traders like yourselves. So it's, it's strange for me to say that you don't need to know where the market's going to be to make money. It helps because we're looking to predict um, where markets are going, but you don't necessarily need to know where it's going to go in the next five minutes, the next hour, in order to make uh, to make money. So, first of all, we've got a uh, euro dollar five minute chart up. Okay. Now, to me, I was going to throw it into um, into questions. So I was going to ask you to participate, and I was going to say basically, what does this chart tell you? Now, that could take. Feel free to to, to throw anything into the chat um, as we go through these time frames. But to me, it shows nothing. Okay. So in this uh, time frame, in this five minute time frame, do I want to be trading it? Okay. Because all we've got today is consolid is consolidation. Okay. Now. How do, we, how do we know that? Well, we can just see it, really. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket science scientist to, to see that that is going nowhere, okay? We've got the market rejecting levels around 130, 135, okay? And, 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 and traders are buying dips around 131, the figure. So we've got like a 35 pip range, which euro dollar is pretty, pretty tight, okay? Could end up being an inside day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what else we have on here that also um, shows us that the market is going nowhere is this. Okay, our moving averages, we're, we're, we're getting chopped up. Okay, I never um, would suggest that anybody trades moving average crossovers. Okay, because they're such a lagging indicator. But what they are good for us, they're good to show us show us trend. Okay, and if we a bit more confirmation. Which you don't really need, to be perfectly honest. Um, we'll just put, we can put momentum on there, we can put, we'll put RSI on there, okay. So I really just try and connect. Okay. Always a good idea. I know, I, I always put RSI on because it's the only one that I look at, really. Um, and I always put it on, it's just so we've got a, a horizontal line around 50, okay. And if I'm trading around 50, then again, it's just confirmed what I'm seeing up here. There is no trend. Um, a lot of the time on this RSI, you know, we end up getting a channel the same as we get to the top, or even a consolidating triangle formation, okay, actually on the uh, on the trend indicator, okay. So. Um, so what I'm trying to get forward here is that this time frame, okay, as we're looking at it now, has no trend. It's uh, it's it's trading sideways, okay. So then we break it up, okay. And this is what I mean about the different time frames showing us um, different aspects, okay. So here we've had an aggressive move lower, okay. Um, a move back up, a higher low, and then 
another push up. Now, this to me again has um, a different aspect to it. So we're tra trading sideways in uh, in five minutes or micro time frames, as I, I, I call them. Okay. Uh, whereas in here, we actually look like we in the hourly, we look like we've got a free wave correction. Okay. So. Slightly extended ABCD formation. So we're just going to copy that in. Okay, so an aggressive move down uh, and then a free wave correction higher. What? So I was just reading a message from Ward. No problem, Ward. Um, so what we've got is um, a free wave correction. But the bias is still bullish, okay? Because if we look to the to the moving averages, okay, we have crossed. And remember, I don't trade across, but it's in order, okay? So it's showing that the bias is slightly to the upside, okay? The RSI is still to the upside, but it's dropping off. So even though I think that we have a free wave correction, I've, I'm, I'm failing to push through support. I've got support around 131, the figure. I'm failing to push through support. So even though I want to sell it, I've got to stand on my hands. It's pretty hard to stand on my hands. Um, but my bias is to the downside, okay? Um, and then I basically want to be looking as well. I'm not, I'm not trying to load up loads of information, um, but I want to see whether or not we've got other relevant levels, okay, that have, that have halted this, uh, this this move move higher, okay. So a decent impulsive move to the downside, and by that I think we've got an angle into. We've just changed our chart package. Um, I think we've got an angle indicator on here. No. Okay. Input, you'll hear a lot of guys talking about impulse and corrective moves. Okay, and an impulsive move is at an aggressive angle like this. Let me do this. No, a bit not locked up, are we? No. Okay, so we've got an aggressive sell-off. Okay, now the move back up is not aggressive. Okay, it's choppy. And at the moment, it's in three waves and in a channel. Okay, so the bias from here is to the downside. Okay, so let's get rid of all of our studies or tools. And then we move it up again a time frame. Now I'm not saying that you've got to line up all your time frames in other to, you know, to, in, in order to get a trade. You know, there's nothing wrong with with, with taking a long trade um, as long as you as long as you think that that uh, that, that bias is your know, risk reward is going to be good enough. Okay, so you can you can counter trend. You can buy into corrections. Okay. Um, because a lot of the time as well, what you may see as, a, 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 as being a correction, somebody else will see as being the um, impulsive move, okay? And they'll actually see that this move down is just a correction in the big bull run uh, to the upside. So they will be buying, they'll be building long positions. You know, the market is con continuously moving in different directions because uh, we have these swings uh, of market sentiment, okay, of what the bias is, okay, and all we're trying to do is decipher from price action um, how we can get into uh, or, or price action in different time frames to give us a bias into shorter time frames, okay. So here on four hourly, okay, and look, this is where I use my resistance, my my, my EMAs, okay, is that I want to know these levels. Okay, support and resistance. Now, bearish, 
no, I'm just going to show one more time frame, actually, two more time frames. Okay, um, lower high, and then the sell off, and then the weekly, whilst we're not going to have time. And then the weekly was a, a decent bearish outside bar. But again, this is where you sort of the analysis gets flipped a little bit. We had some news, which obviously about the fiscal cliff that obviously moved uh, moved the market um, buying dollars. Um, can we can we count that in that inside bar? You know, it was a, it was it was a bar that was that was starting on the 24th of deck. Does it count? You know, we're technical analysts. It was a very quiet period. Can I count that engulfing, engulfing candle? Okay, and that is what gets me onto these questions that we talked about, or I talked about at the start of the webinar. Okay, can we predict the markets? Do we need to be able to predict, predict the markets? Okay, do we need to know what's going to happen? Do we need to know what's going to happen next to make money? Okay, and it's all about the bias. So. Those different time frames show different views, which I think most of you will agree on. Even to the point where you know this weekly, is, even though we've got a bearish engulfing from the top, okay, you know the bias is still to the upside. We've got a five wave sequence down. We should get a larger three wave correction up. So how, how do you trade it? You've got so one time frame telling you that you should be bullish, another time frame telling you you should be bearish, another time frame telling you you should, you should stand aside. Okay, um, and I'm going to show you a, a technique that is that is basic, but it should, if worked properly with money management, it should leave you some trades on to bleed for the for, for the big moves. Okay. How do, how do you get a trade on down here and still have it on when it's reaching it reaching the highs, okay? Without really having to know where the market's going to go. So I'm just going to remove all the drawing tools. And all I'm going to have on is these two uh, moving averages, okay? And an RSI. With a 50 level, okay? So... The RSI 50 level gives me my bias in that time frame. Okay. What else gives me my bias in that time frame are these moving averages. Okay. And all, I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to just put horizontal lines where those moving averages are Okay. because that's giving me a bias. And remember when I turn around to throw a mind about the subject. <laughs> Yes, I know. It's, I'm getting there, I promise, Bookie. Um, so, what. Let's watch I can thought now again. Um, so, as I said before, I don't use moving averages as um, crossovers. I use them as trend direction, I use them as sort of support and resistance, okay? So, basically, these two levels in the weekly chart, okay, give me or show me uh, where support is coming in. It's above 50 on the RSI, side, so I know that the bias is still bullish. I've got a bearish outside weekly bar, which slightly skews the uh, the support level, but I should at least get a bounce off those levels, okay, off these support levels. So then I break it down into daily. And what I'm looking for a lot of the time is what is confluence. Okay, so I want to see more moving averages in a defined area because I know that there's a lot going to be a lot of price action or a lot of support or a lot of resistance around that price area. Okay, so here I've got this moving average and I've got this moving average. Okay, so this is my support zone, which is quite strong. And this is my resistance level. Now, I basically turned around at the, uh, at the earlier on, and I basically said, "Do you need to know where it's going to go to make money?" 
No, you don't necessarily. Because if you have a system that gives you support and resistance levels, okay, those support and resistance levels aren't going to hold forever, but it will get you into a trade, okay? And it's going to get you into a trade without having to let the market turn before you get into the trade, okay? Because we just said, can I predict a, tra a change of trend? Now, when the market was down here, okay, on the low trade on Monday, there weren't many um, indicators at that point that, uh, that the market was going to turn, was there? At that point, at that low trade, okay? Fib extensions, because I was, I, was, I was trading it, watching it myself. Fib extensions weren't there, okay? There's no trend lines that I can see that would suggest that support comes, comes in here, okay? So I've used these moving averages as the support resistance to get into the trade, because I know that the market is going to move in trends, okay? And even when it's not trending, uh, it's going to be moving sp between these support re support and resistance levels. Okay, so I want to be long, then I want to get out some at resistance, and then take short, and then get out some at support. Okay, because loads of different traders, depending on the type of traders they are, are looking at these markets in loads of different time frames, and that's what I was trying to get to earlier. Okay, what a time frame tells you, a certain time frame tells you is five minutes. Don't bother trading it. Okay. Daily, I've got resistance. I'd like to sell into that gain. Okay, uh, two days ago, I've got support. I'd like to buy into that support. So you don't necessarily need to know where it's going to go to be able to get a trade on. And then we get to money management. Okay, because the money management side is the most important thing. Can we trade this system, if you like, in in one unit? Okay, no, you can't because you need to be able to leave some on. Because if we buy down here, if we're lucky enough to buy down there, okay, and then I want to sell some here because this is my then resistance level, I've got to get out of the whole trade because I'm only trading in one unit. What I want to be doing is buying at least in two unit. And, and, and in, in this day and age, you know, you can be buying it in 50p a point. You can have micro trading accounts, etc. So that you know, you can you can come out of of, of half your trades. Um, okay, micro accounts, your, your spreads aren't going to be great. But so but the idea is is to get in at least one unit. Okay, get out of half the unit, or you know, if you're bought in two, sell one at resistance, leave the other one on at your entry level, okay, just in case the market breaks to the upside. Now, going back to this level here, this was the resistance, it moved back off resistance, then you move back to support, so you'd have sold two, okay, taken one off at support, and then stopped, and then the stop to entry. So if it breaks to the upside, this one's been stopped, okay, the short trade, but I'm still long. So in other words, I can have a long position, I can have a short position, but at different levels, I've bought, the, I've bought, hopefully, bought near the base, and I've sold near the high. Now, if the market breaks lower, so over here, I'm short, okay, if the market breaks to the upside, I've still got a unit on, okay, and I'm long. And I then want to stay long, and, and, and leave that, that, uh, that long trade on, until I get a real decent signal that I want to be closing that off. But in the meantime, I still want to be buying and selling um, support and resistance levels, okay? And this is how we can do it off time frames. So I'm not saying that you should ignore um, price action because price action is another, another webinar. But price, price action, aggressive candles can show us the change of trend. And from that, we can get a bias. But for the, not necessarily for the novice, but we don't necessarily have to trade with the long-term trend to, to, to trade intraday, okay? Here, there's only two, 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 um, two candle formations that I particularly like either. Um, and that's an outside bar, 
Okay, one that completely engulfs um, previous candle formation. Okay, so a bearish bar, and then a bullish outside bar, um, preferably at highs and lows. Let me just see if we'll find one. But again, people will be seeing, or traders will be seeing, that in different time frames. So where? Um, no, I'm I'm selling um, euro dollar. And I'm going to explain why, okay? Because this was the buy level, okay? And then up here, it hit the moving average, and then this is the sell level, okay? And then we break it down again through time frames. And do you see how this is my daily resistance? And then I've got a four hour resistance coming in here as well. So I've got a conflu confluence area here me to get short, okay, and I've got a bullish area here from my moving averages to get me long, so basically long one unit from here now and short two units from here, okay, because this was really the signal to sell off this moving average, okay, and then I should be taking one unit off uh, at the base, because my I'm, I'm still trading it with what my view is, but I'm trading it in between support and resistance levels. You see what I'm saying? So this, I hope you're doing it. I know it's a little bit confusing. This, this is an aggressive sell-off. Okay? But it's an aggressive sell-off into support. What did I say? I, I said that you can still trade against your view as long as, firstly, you don't outstay your welcome. And secondly, when, it, when, you, when you do get into your resistance levels with your view, then you trade, you trade with it. You might be right, you might be wrong, but you're basically going to be, you're going to be long and short, but you're going to re run the winner, if you like. Okay? Don't be long and short at the same level. I mean, I've heard of these guys that say, oh, you know, you buy and sell at the same level, then you take the winner off and you run the loser, and you buy and sell at, you know, uh, this pyramid trading. Um, bar me as far as I'm concerned, because all you're ever going to do is just, you're just netting all the time. Um, here, you're buying, hopefully near the end of the trend, okay, and then you're selling the correction level, okay, so you're using larger time frame, moving average as your support, short time frame, moving average as your resistance, okay. Now, if she runs, and you've got to remember what two units bought here, okay? One unit cashed in here, okay? So we're still long around 08, 100 big figures, okay? 100 big figures, 100, 100 pips, and one big figure, okay? So still got profit running and banks and gains, okay? So that long trade has paid for itself no end. Now, if the market does take out this resistance level. Yes, I've lost small, but I've only lost small in two units. I've still one unit long, and I'm still building on that profit. So, do you see what I'm saying? It's you not you don't necessarily need to know where the market is going in order to make money, as long as you can spot support and resistance levels and trade off them. And leave them okay, until one runs. One gets stopped and one gets run, run gets run out. Okay, and all that happens, all well, that has been happening, okay, is the market has a tendency just to trade between these 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 S and R's, these support and resistance levels. Okay, and that to me is quite strong. We've got two moving averages that are, that are close together. Okay doesn't look like it's going to break to the downside too aggressively, but I've got that bias because of this, okay? So this is my bias, okay? I bought the correction, I'm now selling into the rally, okay? But I'm still long one. These moving averages are 20 and 50. Simple moving averages. Anybody got any questions? Okay, and then so, so we talked about trade size. There's another way that you can you can play this, not this game, but you, 
you have to trade in two units because you need to get some off. But shall I shall I hold or shall I fold, which is what we were talking about before? Keep holding both of your positions, okay? Until two two things happen. One of two things happen. You get stopped out in one, and then you run in the second. Okay, pull the stop into an inventory. So basically, long here. Okay, short here. If this stop gets taken, then I want to bring my my long um, my long stop limit. Okay, up to here or below this moving average. Okay. Um, if it breaks and moves lower below this moving average, then I want to be cashing this one in. Okay. It's a long trade. Um, when to hold and when to fold. So that's one scenario. You either get stopped out in one trade and you run the other, or you only have one view, okay, and you just trade that moving average, okay, and you just trade it to the upside. But th the reason for trying to show you this this webinar today is because we can, we can always look to different time frames and different time frames will give us different views and a lot of the time yes I'm a great believer in in trading with the bias and most of the um, daily calls that we produce at first of trading will be based around a daily bias okay so you know the call today uh, has been to short Euro dollar from the open, and that's because we've got an ABC correction uh, correction uh, completion. We've got a fib level, or we're trading in between fib levels, okay. And I've got some uh, resistance to the upside. It depends. It depends which time frame you're looking at. That's what I'm saying. So here, this daily one, I entered the sh entered the long. Okay, on the daily time frame, and I've entered the short on the two two forty minute time frame. Okay, because this was a bullish signal or or bullish support, if you like. Okay, and this is this is uh, this is bearish. Okay. Okay, the actual moving averages have gotten here. Um, a 15 exponential moving average and a 62 exponential moving average. Okay, any any questions? And we find that we can do this. It's, it's, it's not. It's a, some, we talked to somebody that um, signed up yesterday as well for um, for our analysis, and I said to him, I said, you know, do you do you trade full time? Do, have you got time to, to 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 spend in front of the charts? Because obviously the market is continuously moving. This is not something. You couldn't trade this part time, okay? Because you obviously these moving averages throughout the day are moving with the marketplace, okay? Um, obviously, if you get a decent trend like this one down here, okay, you can then build off the moving average, okay? Because you've you've broken through. Forget these lines now, because obviously they, that that wasn't support or resistance at the time. Okay, but you then break through, and these resistance levels, okay, help you build a short position down to the support level, even on the basis where you can take it to even shorter time frames. So, 
you know, this is support, this is off, this is a 15 minute chart. But it'll work, it'll work in most, most time frames if you really want to screw it down to, into shorter time frames. And then we get, and here, in shorter time frames I'd actually use signals. So, obviously bearish, moving to the downside, and then we get, that's the wrong one, that's not. And then we get engulfing bars. Okay, which is obviously price action, which is a well off for another day. Okay. So as we, as we move lower, you can see here, outside bar, outside red on 15 minutes. Okay. There's no other outside reds. I really want them near the moving averages as well. So outside red, market moves to the downside. An outside bearish red here, okay, at a moving average. Mark moves to the downside. Um, you know, outside red here, market moves to the downside. I wouldn't have been trading that too late in the day anyway. But you can you can add to your position once you're in a view in a in a position. Once the once you say say if you've got that an hourly sell um, and you like it and the market starts moving in your favour. Because um, FX bookies just just asked, yes, you can then trade it into turn it into a shorter time frame. So the market started moving in your favour. You can then buy and sell it. You know, a lot of um, professional traders, institutional traders, will say somebody said, "What's your view on euro dollar?" And they'll say, "Well," and I know this because I used to go drinking with them and broking. I was a FX broker for twelve years in London, so. And you'll say, what's your position on euro dollar? And you say, I'm bullish, I'm buying dips. You know, you, and you'll hear that a lot. They're not, they're not, they're not necessarily looking to sell the lows. But when you get an opportunity, if the trend is, is, is down, then I'll sell rallies. I'll sell rallies, I'll buy dips. So the best place, you've got, you've got to pick a place where you're going to sell rallies or where you're going to buy dips. Um, and these, these moving averages work very well for that. So you can... Basically, an hourly view, <coughs> and it's moved underneath the moving averages, okay, on the hourly, and it starts moving lower. You can then break it down to a five-minute time frame and trade off the moving average or trade off um, the bearish engulfing uh, candle formation. Um, and that's obviously what I was saying here today. You know, the if you're going to trade that tip, it's good because it keeps you out of trouble. Because here, how the hell can I trade off a moving average? Well, I can't because it's not going anywhere. I can have a punt, but it's just a punt. It's just the resistance level up here, okay? It's not, this is nothing. So until it starts trending, and the market going to be right or wrong, okay, then when it starts breaking lower, but then you move in average, you start to gap. Okay. Then, to yesterday, then you can start taking your your uh, your trades off your moving average. Okay. Bullish engulfing. Going okay, to crossover, but this is this is this is more important. The fact that it came back, retested the 50. Okay, and then and then moves up, dips here. Okay, then moves higher, and this this is basically showing us that the trend is to the upside, trend is to the upside. It's only when it starts flattening out, okay, and it starts charting just around the 50 RSI in short time frames that there is that there is no trend. But the trend in higher time frames, the trend in the daily, is is but bearish from this level, bullish from this level. But overall bearish because I've got a weekly engulfing candle. So just because that's the case, does it mean that I shouldn't be taking short trades? <laughs> I trade better after a couple of beers. You you lose the uh, you lose the fear bit. I don't know about the greed. But the, the fear of it seems to disappear after a couple of uh, a couple of shandies. Okay, I've been told by 
uh, more that we've only um, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, so has anybody got any questions? And, uh, and again, just to just to to emphasise what this was about today. You know, can we predict the markets? No, we can't. Nobody can say it's definitely going up from here. Nobody can say it's definitely going down from here. Okay, you can have a bias, which is what we look for. Okay, but a bit of news story. Somebody comes out. Um, you know, another tsunami. You know, hopefully not. But you know, there's constantly news that's coming out. Um, so we can't we can't necessarily predict the markets. We can have a bias, but we can't predict the markets. Okay? Can we tell when trends are going to change? No. But again, we can use shorter time frame moving averages to show a trend of a change of trend, getting underneath those moving averages, okay, to push the trend down or up. Okay? And that is nice, obviously. Also, when we get uh, um, uh, engulfing patterns. Okay? Do we need to know what's going to happen next in order to make money? No, not necessarily. Not not if we're just buying off support, selling off resistance, and we've got good money management. Okay, you know, we buy off that support level. If it doesn't, if it doesn't hold, we cut cut it out. We get out. Okay. Um, and do we need to know what's going to happen next? No. And then our last question was, can you trade in one unit? Well, you can. It's it's very hard. Uh, what chart package? Um, is the we've just moved over to e signal. It's an e signal package. Um, I don't necessarily go from low to higher. Um, I, all, all I wanted to show first thing that today was the fact that five minute time frame is is non trending. Okay, but higher time frames are trending. Um, I actually go the other way around normally. Uh, I don't know what package e signal it is to be honest. The bell's going off. It figures out. Okay, so we're moving a little bit lower. So now look, so basically this is now the prime time to take half off. Okay, so sold here, take half off. I'm long one unit, short one unit, and I want to I basically want to see uh a reaction here, okay. I personally think it's going to break to the downside. Uh, the RSI setting is 15. Let's see what else is going on. That was the chart I was supposed to use. Okay, it was off a little bit. Short euro sterling from 816. Now, again, I'm going to I'm gonna have to jump in a sec because I'm I've been instructed to copy any later than 12.45. Um, but again, this euro sterling getting short of 81.60 as we did this morning. It's okay. That's not not a calculated guess, but it's a decent trade with low risk reward. Um, we've had a downside move. It can be seen in five waves. We've got a three wave correction to the upside. Uh, it's stalled. It's an ABC formation and it's a fib level. Now, again, you don't necessarily have to use. Um, what am I trying to say? You don't necessarily have to use moving averages to get you in and out. If you've got a confl con confluence area, okay, of where you've got the end of an ABCD formation, where you've got a moving average. Uh, that lines up as well, maybe maybe an RSI that lines up, maybe a FIB level that lines up. If you've got a combination, a large combination of support or resistance in one level, it means that more traders will be looking at that support or resistance level. So you've got more of a chance of at least getting a bounce from that level. And basically what you want to do, you want to buy the bounce, okay, get, your, get, get half your unit off, Get your stop to entry or below the low, okay, and then try and run it, run it. And it's running the trades that makes you money. Okay, I've never really. I'd like to be able to scalp, but I'm not any good at it. Um, and that's why I like to get positions on. I like the market a lot of the time to tell me where it's going to go, as opposed to 
kind of guess, if you like. Okay, we've um, we've got to go, guys. Um, I hope it made sense. Firstly, um, good luck with your trading. As I said earlier, um, have a good 2013. Um, if you want to um, trial our analysis, we, we do a discount uh, discounted one month trial for anybody that wants to um, wants to come and have a look at, at what we do. Okay, and that's first for trading, uh, the number four uh, first for trading. Uh, dot com. Okay. Until I see you guys. <laughs>